doctrine of the Trinity is the most important Christian doctrine that most people never think about. It's absolutely essential to our faith, and yet I think for many Christians, it just seems like a very confusing math problem. And even if we can figure out what Trinity means, it doesn't feel like it has really much bearing on our lives, much relevance to us. The word Trinity famously is not found in the Bible, but the word does very well at capturing what are a number of biblical truths. There's actually seven statements that go into the doctrine of the Trinity. Uh, God is one, so there's only one God. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. And the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Spirit. And the Spirit is not the Father. You get those seven statements, and you've really captured the doctrine of the Trinity, what it means when we say there is one God and three persons. So Christians are monotheists. We don't believe in many gods or a pantheon of gods, but just one God, and yet this God expresses himself and exists as three persons. That language of persons is very important. The, the, the early church wrestled with the appropriate language, and persons really speaks to the personality of the three members of the Trinity and also their relationship with each other so that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are in this mutual dance and union, and yet they're different. One is not the other, but they're equal in rank, equal in power, equal in glory, equal in majesty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, just like Jesus sends out the disciples to go baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We see this doctrine of the Trinity woven throughout the scriptures. E even more confusing to people is, is probably why does this even matter? Okay, I understand I got three in one, one in three. What difference does this make for anything in, in my Christian life? And in good Trinitarian fashion, I think there are, are three really important things that the doctrine means for us. Number one, that it, the Trinity helps us to understand how there can be unity and diversity. This is really one of the, the most pressing questions in our world. You have some folks who are all diversity, we're all so different, there's no common ground. And there's other people who want to press for complete uniformity in thought and government and expression. And really the Trinity shows us that you can have a profound, real, organic unity with diversity so that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are working in complete union in our salvation. The Father appoints, the Son accomplishes, the Spirit applies, and yet there's different roles and different ways in which they relate to each other. So that's one. The second would be how the, the doctrine of the Trinity teaches us about community that we have a God, one God, who exists in three persons, eternally in community with each other. And as important as it is as Christians that we love one another, that we care for one another, that we support, we respect one another, all of these things that are bound up in being Christian are found and have their origin in the Trinity and the relationship there. And then, and then finally, maybe most importantly, when you have a triune God, you have the eternality of love. Love has existed from all time. So if you just have God, just one God, not three persons, he has to create a being to love, to be an expression of his love. But Father, Son, and Holy Spirit existing in eternity for all time has always had this relationship of love. So love is not a created thing. God didn't have to go outside of himself to love. Love predates power. Love is eternal. And when you have a triune God, you have fully this God who is love.